From the world of AV programming and control with James King, I'm Steve Greenblatt, and this is Ask the Programmer. Hey, James, it's great to be back with you, and I'm looking forward to another exciting episode. How are you? Um, always great to be back. And uh, how are you doing, Steve? Doing well. Today, today's the don't have as much energy as as I used to have, but uh, I'm pushing through. So <laughs> thanks for asking. Uh, we, we, if you haven't tuned in um, to our previous episode, uh, we we uh, were pleased and honored to have Mark Lavecchia from BMA Software Solutions with us, and he's back with us to uh, speak some more. So welcome back, Mark. Thank you. I appreciate you having me back in here. Uh, good group of people, and I love the conversation. So thanks. I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. So if you uh, didn't catch episode 132, Mark gave us a little bit of background uh, and his history in the industry and how he came to uh, get involved in the programming world and and really the specific area of his expertise and also some details about uh, independent programming companies. And I, I could share some of that because that's the world that I have lived in for uh, 25 plus years. So it's uh, very, very familiar, but I wanted an, an external and James and I wanted an external um, uh, guest to be able to share with us about that. And I think what one of the, we, we talked a little bit about what where we could go with this conversation and something that I think would be interesting to talk about. And, and, and um, it's kind of an ask the programmer question is, can independent and in-house programmers coexist and, and, and how, how can they collaborate and, and is it either or, or can there be a relationship between the two? And um, Mark, I'll, I'll kind of let you um, kick that off. And then James, if um, you can uh, comment on it as well. I think it's a great topic because it was one of the first barriers that we had to overcome when we started at BMA. Uh, in the beginning, somebody would hire our company to go program a system, and then we dispatched them out to the job site, and they'd load a test commission and leave the job site. Uh, at this point, probably 95% of our work is remote support. We very rarely go to a job site unless it's something intense, 10-way divisible system, something like that. Uh, so how do we how do we make that work? Because in the beginning, what you have are, the good thing about pro, internal programmers and integrators, the good thing about them is that they appreciate having an, having an outside company come in and help out. I, I think a lot of people think that that may not be the case. It's always been our experience that they're like, you know what, and I would happy to have you pick this up for me because number one, I'm overloaded. I don't have enough time. If you could help, it would be great. And once you have that conversation going, the very first thing that has to happen is we need to have a conversation with the internal programmers, especially if they were involved in a project that we're picking up, and their field engineers, which are two different people. They're sometimes they're the same, but for all intents and purposes, um, we're dealing with one or two of them in the field. And if they just send them out and they we tell them, pull down the code and go test it and let me know if you have any problems, they're going to have problems. And half of those problems are going to be as a result of not knowing what's going on. So it's imperative for us that we make sure that everybody that's involved understands the scope of work, the way that the system is designed to function, and that they have all the tools that they need in order to be able to be successful in the field. It could be just something like toolbox, right? It, I didn't have that on my laptop. You got to go to the field. You got to go pull it down, whatever it is. So we start with customers in the beginning before we even do a job. If we have projects that are in the in the queue, we meet with them and, and we sit down with their programmers and their field engineers for that project. And we say, these are the things that we're going to be doing. These are the things that we're going to be asking you to do in the field. Oh, I've done that. I've done it. I've done it. Great. So you have this software and this software and we use like any desk or you prepared for any desk so we can remote in and we put all that up there in the beginning. And then we also make sure that they have uh, the, the user interface document that we create so that they can see how the system works. Because by doing that, then they sit down. I don't know if you've ever run into this, but sometimes a programmer doesn't know how the system works. They just know that it's not working the way they think it should. So they start tweaking your code in the field to work the way they think it should work. And then all of a sudden, three steps down, they're like, hey, this isn't working. So the communication is really the key here uh, to make sure that this works. And it's an honest communication. It's simple enough to say, we're not trying to take your job because they know that. We're, we're always being brought in to help 
with an overflow, something along those lines, better management of the code, uh, a large project, uh, communication key right out of the gate. This is what we need. What do you need? How can we work together? What can we do to make your life better? And start with that honest conversation. 100% of the time, never an issue. Everybody gets along great. But, uh, <clears throat> James, uh, similar to the last episode, is this what what you you used to hearing, or you know what 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 um what what more what other details would you be um, interested in knowing to to be able to uh, see how the synergy could work? Um. So, just as the last episode, this has not been my experience. In fact, my experience was the third party programmer uh, company didn't want to talk to the user, like the true end user. So anytime we were dealing with an issue, we would have to talk to the integrator and then the integrator would have to talk to the programmer and then go back and forth. So basically the integrator was playing telephone. Um, and you know, if you ever play the game of telephone, things get lost, things get miscommunicated and things like that. So that has not been my experience. Again, it's a refresher hearing Mark talk about this because this is stuff I've been preaching from day one. Um, so it's great to hearing that. And so, yeah, it's just like one of those things where, where is this coming? Why are my experience different than what Mark is talking about? Is Mark the outlier or are we just getting outliers in what we're dealing with? Well, I could tell you, I could tell you a couple of things, especially in your situation, because you really are the end user here. Okay. So you may be working with an integrator who's putting in the equipment. Integrators are, are we're going to ask them in the beginning, are we going to be involved with this project and this customer? Uh, and probably 80% of the time we are, we're going to get on a call. We're going to um, kind of do a discovery in terms of how the system's going to work and what their expectations are. Do they have an existing look and feel and stuff like that? Uh, ultimately though, I will tell you that if, if we go through that process and we're all working, uh, BMA and the integrator and the customer, and we come up with a solution and a plan and we move forward. If I suddenly get a phone call or an email from the end user saying, hey, I had an idea, I have to turn that back to the integrator, okay? Uh, because the, the integrator is my date for the prom, okay? So uh, I, I, I shouldn't be talking to somebody else's date at, at that point. So now we're clear with that with my customers and they know that and I would always turn it back to them. And I would tell the customer, because there's two parts of it. Number one is I have an idea and we, could, you, could you show me this? Could you send me samples of this and so forth? I want, that's fine, but I want the integrator to be aware of that. That's important. Uh, but the other part of it is, and this is the trickiest part, is if we're at the site and we're commissioning the system and the end user is over our shoulder that becomes a whole different beast where I need the integrator involved because what happens is they come over and they go, hey, uh, do you think while you're doing this, it would be kind of cool if you could do this. So what we do, my, all, of my, all of my programmers have extra notepads in their, in their uh, backpacks and they break out and it's, it's called the, this is for later notepad. Every time you have an idea of, you know what would be cool, write it down. And then when we get done with the original scope of work that we have, then we'll sit down with the integrator and we'll come up with day two. Uh, because that doesn't happen. A lot of times the programmers are there and they're like, oh, well, I'll just go ahead and, you know, sure, let me just go ahead and fix it for you. Let me just click it. And the truth of the matter is, once you open a door like that, you can't close it. Uh, the, the phrase a lot of people use often is you can't put the toothpaste back in, you know, it, it, it once you say, I can change that for you without any boundaries whatsoever, that's it. You're done. You're changing things for the rest of your life and you're not making any money. So it's it in that regard, you want that integrator as an intermediary. Um, in other cases, the integrator doesn't want you anywhere near them in part because they don't even want the, the end user to know that they're subbing out the work. So that's a different animal. I don't know. I, I don't know that that's something that you worry about in your situation, James. Do you care? the integrator you're using is stubbing out? So again, 
as we mentioned last time, this is so new to me where I was before we did 99% in-house. So we didn't outsource much. Uh, here is a different piece we're tackling. So I'm still learning. I don't care as long as it's a partnership. Like I can have a communication with the integrator. Even if I have to go through the integrator and you know, my message is getting clear and the information I'm getting back is clear, then it's great. It's a great partnership. Or if the integrator goes, oh, let me bring in the programmer. Let's talk about this. That's a good partnership. It's the whole, where I'm seeing is some integrators, it's not all integrators. I've dealt with a couple of them. Some are this way, some aren't. But some of the integrators are, oh, you tell me this. I'll go and then like a week later they come back. Oh, no, you can't do that. Or no. Yeah. Oh, we forgot to tell that. Or, oh, that message never got relayed. Um, so that is, again, that partnership. And that makes me frustrated because I know how things can work and how right. things can improve. Now, I understand what you're saying, Mark, and that whole you cannot change things because I've even done this with uh when I wrote my own code and all that stuff, if I'm working on a system and the our users, our faculty members are all over our shoulder, go, well, can you do this? Can you do that? Be like, that's going to cost more money. Correct. But I go, you want that change? That's going to cost more money. Normally, when you throw that out, they're like, yeah. oh, okay, never mind. Because right. <laughs> right. everyone wants everything for free. <laughs> yeah, well, and they think that they 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 think that they're going to get it for free. And yep. the reason they think is because what for our, our experience has been that at the end, that let, you know, everybody talks about the last 10% of a job to get it done and close it out. Right. Uh, we have one of our customers actually has a higher closers. These are people that know the job from beginning to end, everything about it. And their job is to go in at the end of the job and finish that last 10%, make sure everything's terminated, make sure every button works, make sure everything is a hundred percent. And you stay there until it is. Now, that's the moment when they need to be able to say, anything you want beyond here is going to have to come back at a later time. Yeah. You can't just start making changes or we're never going to get the room done. Uh, it, it's important for us to make sure that we we communicate that to our integrators all the time. And we tell them, that if we're going to be at the job site, the minute the customer comes over and says, oh, hey, what are you doing? Or what's going on? Uh, I, we're, I work with these guys. If you have any questions, you have to go see them. And if they want to bring them back, that's cool. I got no problem with that. But the, the what what happens is, and this is an on-site thing that's frustrating. We don't run into it as much anymore. Is if people don't know what we really do. Okay, it could take you a while to troubleshoot something, and you're sitting there for two hours trying to get something to work, and it's not working. And somebody that doesn't know what you do, trying to figure out what you're doing. And then all of a sudden, and I've had this happen, something pops up on your laptop and you have a message or your wife calls or your husband calls or something like that. And then it becomes, hey, why am I paying this guy to sit here when, when, when he's talking to his wife on the phone? And I'm, you know what I mean? Like, look, listen, okay. It's important for you to go, I call the integrator, get get Billy out of here, would you? Because he, he's going to give a bad experience to everybody. Um, I could see that in your world without question. That would that'd be very frustrating. Yep. So, yeah, Steve and I have talked about that numerous times and people don't understand what we do and how long it takes sometimes to uh, track the rabbit through the hole. Yep. Yeah. And it's frustrating. It's it, 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 it all comes down to the same thing. Everything comes down to the same thing. Communication. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's, it's a cliche and it's overused, but it, it wouldn't be if it wasn't true. Um, and what we what we say internally is that communication and documentation are undefeated. <laughs> if if I make sure that everything is in writing, first of all, if somebody calls and they go, hey, I'm having a problem, blah, blah, blah. Then what we'll do is we'll rewrite, what, we'll write up what they've communicated to us and put it in writing for everybody to see and say, we want to make sure that this is what you see. If we understanding this correctly, because if you rely on phone calls, you're in trouble. Forget it. You're never going to get it down. It has to be in writing. People don't like. People get. Well, I just want to call you and go over some things. I get that, right? But here's the thing that you need to understand. At least for independent programmers are concerned, everything that our programmers do generates revenue for this company, a hundred percent. Okay. So I 
try to make sure that their time is being used as efficiently as possible and not burning too many hours doing something because somebody had an idea and they wanted to make a phone call. Uh, and so from that perspective, I got off the rails a little bit, but from that perspective, it, it's, it's difficult to communicate that to somebody. Say, you know, I'm here to do the job for you. I'm here to make your room work, but I'm here to make money. You know, I'm here to make a profit. And, and the way that we do that is by documentation, communication, process, work the plan, plan the work, work the plan. Uh, and, and if everybody agrees to that up front, which they have to do, they can't just hear it. They have to agree. Yes, I agree with you. I agree with your process. Let's work with it. Everything works like that. Then by the time you get to the end, you eliminate the problems. So that's been our experience anyway. Well, 100%. I agree with everything I'm writing because uh, I even started doing now where, well, especially in my world, we have a lot of people come up, not even just programming, but to like, oh, we want to do X, Y, and Zs, or this is how this event is going to run. And what I'll do is I'll take that. And then what I'll do is I'll actually write down and be like, just to make sure we're on the same page, I'll put in an email or our ticket system, same page. This is what we discuss and I outline. I, my team will do this. Your team will do this. This is what we're doing. And they will come back. Yes, that's what we talked about. No, that's not what we talked about. Let's change it around. So again, we have it in writing. So yes, verbal happens, but you got to put it in writing. If it's not in writing, it doesn't happen. And listen, I'll do verbal with you, okay? But uh, as, as I mentioned in the previous episode, uh, I've been doing this for 40 years now, over 40. Uh, and I have people today that I work with who I met when I first came into the business. I still work with them. I'll do a verbal with them all day long. These are people I know and I trust and I rely on. I have an image to share whatsoever. But if it's somebody new, something's, I have an idea or whatever, documentation, communication, undefeated, man. And especially if something goes wrong. And we don't like to talk about when things go wrong in our business. But we're still built in a business that has people that have fingers that need to be pointed in another direction. <laughs> and and so and when that happens, uh, we just are like, no, wait, here we have just not for nothing. I'm not saying this is someone, my, you know, just here. <laughs> this is not what happened. Put your finger down. Let's stop worrying about the storms at sea. Let's get the ship in. Let's fix this. Let's get it right, you know. I don't know about you, Mark, but things never go wrong here. Come on. <laughs> no, no, no. Everything. Well, and, and, see, what, what are, and see, the interesting thing is that for us, and it's like Steve mentioned this previous episode, uh, we're a little bit different. We work like five, five of the same integrators since we've been here. Different banners over their roof because of acquisitions and stuff, but the same people for the last 20 years. And so... We know what we're getting into with these folks, and they know what they're getting into with us. And so it's a repeat business for us. So the beautiful part about that is if something goes wrong, we already know that it's neither one of us. Or if it is one of us, we're quick to say, this is my problem. And that's the, that's the, one of the other things that one day we'll talk about, Steve, which is how do you, if you talk about troubleshooting, you know, because that's the next phase of what we're talking about, James, is something's wrong. How did we get you? And the, the 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 biggest problem we have in our business, especially from manufacturers, is that they're they're quick to say it's not my problem. I, I it's not me. My yeah. my stuff works. Everybody else is making it work. You can't make it work. It must be you. And we tell people all the time: do not ever. I tell my team all the time: never tell anybody it's not the program. That's a joke, right? In the AV world. For programmers, there's a. I saw I saw somewhere uh, a sign of ten things you're going to hear a programmer say, you know, and one of them is it. It couldn't be the program because I had it working yesterday. It doesn't matter. It, you never tell them that, that it's not your program. You show them, and you take them through the process, and you walk them through, and then in the end, if it's your problem, you look smart at least for admitting that you may have had an issue. And if it's not, you didn't stand there on your you know, on your little stump going, it's not my problem. It's childish stuff. We don't have time for it. We need to focus on the things to get done. Show them what the problems are. Don't tell them and you'd be much more successful. I would love to hear more about what you got going on there, James, because it sounds like you've got a lot of fun. That's oh, yeah, a lot of fun. That's an off-air uh, conversation <laughs> for another time. <laughs>
But I think the thing that I'm getting from this is that everything is partnership and, and, and it's all about the relationship. And, and I, w- the thing that I wanted to add, and as we wrap up that the, we don't always have to think about this as an all or nothing. And it's not that somebody has to win and somebody has to lose, or it's only an independent programmer and it's only an in-house programmer. And they, even independent programmers work together on projects to satisfy clients because many of them are smaller companies. We also, Mark and I, we, we've worked together. He has a client that has a need that he doesn't do and he's reached out to us, vice versa. Um, we refer business to each other. We all, but we always do it on a level of trust, trust amongst ourselves and trust also that we're going to refer somebody to uh, a, a partner and say that this person, this company is going to take good care of you just as we would because our name is on the line. And I think that that's an important thing to think about. Well, and again, we communicate during and after the fact as well. How's it going? I think, you know, and I've taken care of the customer and, they're happy and here's something they sent me. I want to let you know. Thanks for the reference. Uh, and I think the three of us will agree on this, although we need the rest of the industry to agree. We're, we're, in what we do from a programming standpoint, there's no room for ego, man. There's no room for ego. If you've got an ego, we're out. There's not a job big enough, a, a, a paycheck thick enough that a, that an ego has to come with it not taking it no we have no use for it take your take your ego somewhere else i'm sure you could find a place to, to, to bounce it around somewhere i think that's a good tip to wrap this up but i mark i think we're going to have you back again because it, there's plenty of other uh co- conversations we could have which i i i knew but i would like to we're glad to share this with james and with our listeners so um that's something that uh, we'll look forward to in the future in the meantime, how could people get in touch with you, learn more about BMA? Uh, straight, just go to our website, bmasoftwaresolutions.com is the best way. Um, I'm not a social media dude, so I don't get too wrapped up in it. Excellent. And uh, James, any final thoughts and how could people get in touch with you and learn what you're up to? Only uh, final thought I have, I, I have one uh, maybe rebuttal against you that uh, uh, no one wins, I think. If we all work together, our customers win, our end users win. Uh, but but has to other than that, it. great conversation and uh, more just picking on you there, Steve. But yeah, if you can find me on uh, X at AVR underscore James King, uh, anything Hetma, again, you Google me, you'll find me. Excellent. And thanks for that, uh, that clarification, because you're correct. And uh for me, you can reach me at Steve Greenblatt on social media, my company, Control Concepts at controlconcepts.net. And most importantly, uh, check out our podcast here. Uh, we have the video version on YouTube, the audio version on Apple and Google Podcasts. Uh, we we want to be reaching out and, and spreading the word about the importance of programmers and, and uh, building community amongst programmers. So please help us do that by sharing your favorite episode and leaving a rating, comment, review, and so on and so forth. And if you're interested in uh, submitting a topic or being a guest, please let us know that as well. And with that, this has been Ask the Programmer.